Diddy pulled the trigger, but I went to jail. I'm speaking for Shine, former rapper, bad boy artist. He had to do 10 years. He was sentenced for 10, served eight years. But many are saying he didn't pull the trigger, including the person, the woman that got shot. Now, the incident happened in 1999. It was a, it was an incident. It was at a club, at a nightclub. And it was some beef between Bad Boy and between uh, Matthew Scar Allen in 1999. Shots were fired. Three people were injured. One young woman got shot in the face. She admitted and continues to say, I looked right at Diddy as he shot me in the face. And I'm willing to reopen this case so that justice will prevail. Stay tuned. Don't nobody go in the bathroom for about 35, 45 minutes. You know, fucked up, you know that, don't you? You got knocked the fuck out! What's up, man? Now, many remember Shine. I used to like Shine because he had a little different twist. He had a yes. different little, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know. He just sounded a little different. And then later to hear that he's from Belize. So, uh, 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 Shine has a few hits and then this incident happened. And next thing you know, you see Shine going to jail. Now, after he released, after he was released for serving eight years of his 10 year jail sentence, Shine moved back to Belize. And later on, you'll see he even thanked Diddy for doing so much uh, work, contributing so much to Belize, to uplifting and increasing the life, you know, um, uh, in Belize. So it seems that Shine had to agree to a gag order and take some money. He had to because Shine is definitely coming out and speaking his claim, but he's very calculated and he's very careful not to say anything negative or incriminate Diddy, but what he is doing that I believe is wise, he's redirecting, you know, people that want to know, he's redirecting them to the young lady's website and to the young lady's comments who was shot in the face because she's spilling all the tea. This thing is crazy. It continues to rain on Diddy. Hopefully Fonsworth Bentley's umbrella is big enough to stop Diddy from getting wet. As I mentioned before, uh, after serving eight years of a 10 year jail sentence, Shine was released, moved back to his home country of Belize. And you ain't going to believe this, but he's a now a member of the House of Representatives. Oh he went into politics. God. His life took a total 180 change. And you got to big up Shine for that, especially if these allegations are true, especially if he really didn't commit the crime. Can you imagine the level of, of, of inner discipline and mindset control you need to serve a jail sentence that you're not guilty for? amazing. He should be commended. So again, Shine was simply focusing on moving forward after this incident. You know, he, he was really quiet when he was released. It was some, you know, headlines and some stories about it, but he kind of, he kind of shifted into the, into the, into the background. And Shine even said he didn't want to be in the forefront. He just wanted to start his life, put that behind him and move on with his life. But again, with these allegations, with Diddy's homes being raided, with all of these allegations coming out against Diddy, Shine had to speak his claim, but he's very careful and he's very calculated. It's almost like he's walking, rather speaking, on eggshells. Again, um, he wanted to focus just on simply going and living his life happily ever after. But then the Rodney Jones lawsuit emerged. Little Rod. And he gave up all the tapes. See, Lil Rod, see, he was one of those people that Diddy couldn't convert. He tried everything to convert him. Other, uh, you know, people tried to, tried to give advances to, uh, Rodney Jones, including Cuba Gooden Jr., allegedly, and a host of other people. But Rodney stood his claim. Even young Miami's cousin started giving him head in the bathroom when he was going to the bathroom and then followed him out and tried to have sex with him. And Lil Rod stood his ground. All he wanted, Diddy gave him $20,000 after he made seven albums. He helped do seven albums on the Love album. Seven seven songs, rather, on the Love album. He gonna give him $20,000. And Little Rod said, look, okay, I, I signed with Bad Boy. It's not going the way I want it. But just give me $50,000 I'll be in the win. You won't hear from me again. Diddy declined. And some would think, had Diddy humbled himself and just coughed up the extra thirty grand." 
none of this wouldn't even have been happening because most of these allegations, including this one with Shine about did he cover it up, you know, putting the gun in general for Lopez's bag and all of this and, and, and that, and also him with um with with with, with um Daphne Joy, 50 Cent's baby's mother. He said that she was a sex worker. So all of this stuff is emerging because of little Rod, Rodney Jones's lawsuit. And all he wanted was 50 grand for his work. And he was in the wind. Yes. Shame on you, Diddy, for whom much is given, much is required. But pride always come before the fall. Right. So, again, Rodney Jones's lawsuit. Reemerged some old wounds. And this was according to shine because although shine know he was innocent allegedly and he did the crime and he more than likely signed a, a gag order in which they gave him money did he gave him money for his silence and things that he couldn't say regarding the case but then the rodney jones lawsuit opened everything back up so here we are because just like cat williams said when he did an interview on club, club shay shay with shannon sharp 2024 is the year of truth. All the truth will come out. But shouldn't we want this? Because the truth will set you free. Now, Stein has always proclaimed his innocence from the beginning. Even with a few interviews he did from jail, he always lent to the fact, to the manner that he didn't do it. But again, whatever the deal was with Diddy or whatever was done, he can't save up for so much. But he was always proclaimed his innocence. He just didn't say who he think is guilty, um, which allegedly is Diddy. Now, he insisted he didn't do it, stating he took the fall for someone else. He just can't say who that someone else is. And we all think and believe it was Diddy. In fact, the young woman who was shot, Natanya Rubin, Natanya Rubin, she said she looked directly oh at Diddy and he shot God. her in the face. She saw him, even the even the medical worker said while she was in a hospital undergoing surgery and under anesthesia, she still was screaming and proclaiming, did he shot me in the face? Right. Um. Now, again, the reason why is because I truly believe Shine agreed to a payout and a gag order, which disallows Shine to discuss details from the case, as I mentioned. However, Shine is doing something very smart. Although he's not coming out directly and saying that Diddy shot her and I took the rap for Diddy under certain conditions, he is redirecting people to the source, to the main source, which is Natanya Rubin. Now, the woman who was shot 25 years ago in the club because she sat and said she saw it all. And she also understands that her life may be in danger. Um, in fact, check out the video around Diddy who are coming out in support of him, uh, saying that he was so sure of his innocence and that that's the reason he didn't take a plea deal in the case that you were involved in where you got shot. So first and foremost, Brian, thank you for having me back on. And I give very little credibility to what they're saying because at, while everyone else is Monday morning quarterbacking, I am the survivor. And it is my assertion wholeheartedly that Mr. Combs was inappropriately charged originally. His charges should have mirrored that of Mr. Jamal Shine Barrow. He should have been charged with attempted murder, mm. a reckless endangerment, criminal possession of a weapon, and firing that weapon in an open environment. And you who ultimately... Absolutely not. So what... Absolutely not. Jamal Shine Barrow admitted on the Combat Jack podcast back in the days, rest in peace to Combat Jack, he admitted that he fired his gun and shot Julius Jones in the shoulder. Mr. Combs did not fire, uh, have accountability for what he did. I physically, who better to tell you what happened than the person who got shot smack dab mm. in, in between my eyes? Listen, here's what I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Respectability politics. He was a notable figure. He was a multimillionaire. He had popularity, fame, all of the, a perfect storm of you get away with it. We know the country we live in, unfortunately, those who have the money can oftentimes get away with their crimes, unfortunately. And those who don't have the same social ranking are overlooked. And that's what, it has, what has happened. By the grace of God, God saw fit to keep me whole, keep my mind sane and functioning, and keep me alive for such a time as this. And make no mistake, the gravity of the danger and the peril that I face 
and that I'm exposed to for having my say now for what was done to me 24 years ago is not lost on me. But let mm. me make uns make clear beyond a shadow of a doubt. I am not now, nor have I ever been suicidal. I love life, and I am grateful that God spared my life back on that fateful day on December yeah. 27, 1999. I'm a living miracle. Yeah, you are and clearly so a very... Anything, Sorry to interrupt you, but you are you are a woman. very strong woman. I think it's important for me to say I'm a healthy sure. woman. I live a simple, quiet, risk-averse life. So if I should meet with an untimely demise, I, it would require and be worthy of deep investigation. I understand the peril of what I am exposing my life to. If yeah, God it's disturbing to hear you say that. I mean, but to have my say, it's disturbing for me to think it and feel it. But yeah. I am healthy. I don't have any intentions of going anywhere. I'm grateful that God spared me, and I plan to live out my life to see my entire, my children's lives actualized and, and realized. Crazy, right? The Tanya continues to uphold her truth. Now, she has upheld that Diddy pulled the trigger the entire time. She says that Diddy has been untouchable for years. His money and fame she is contributing has made him untouchable. And she's not the only person who said this. She said that Diddy has dodged accountability, not just for this, for shooting her in the face, but for many other crimes. Now, Diddy was only charged with gun possession and bribery charges. Sean was the scapegoat. Sean took the blunt for attempted murder and was sent to jail. And he kept quiet. He served it like a trooper. Now, Diddy and Jennifer Lopez were dating at the time. Now, you hear crickets from Jennifer Lopez's camp. You heard crickets for years from Jennifer Lopez's camp. Anytime Diddy got caught up with something. And, and you notice they always promoted her other relationships, you know, so that in, in, in turn that would diminish when she was indeed with Diddy. But she was there. In fact, they said that Diddy, after he sh shot he put the gun in Jennifer Lopez's bag. Now, this is crazy. So according to Ms. Rubin, and I quote, I literally told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him, meaning Diddy. I got shot in the face. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. She's proclaiming it. She's upholding it. She's staying firm on her truth. You know, even the surgeon who did my surgery, testified in the criminal trial that while they were putting me under anesthesia, I was screaming, Puffy shot me in the face. This doesn't sound like someone that's making up a story. It sounds like this is coming from the depth of her soul. Now, um, everybody knew it, but he paid off the club bouncer and all the other people to hide the video. That's his M.O., alluding to this is what Diddy does. This is what happens when you're a part of the elite club. As I did my video the other day, the billionaire's club and the amongst the elites, you tend to try to get away with these things. And you saw in the video, um, Natanya also made mention to her life possibly being in danger as a result of coming out with this truth. But oh she did say, I live a clean God. life. I live a life that's not dangerous at all. So if something happens to me, basically, just know I didn't take my own life and investigate Diddy for retaliation for me coming out saying these things. Isn't this crazy? So for you already to be the victim, but then have your life jeopardized because you just want the truth to be up, upheld. You thank God for sparing your life and you just want justice to prevail. Hey, listen, my heart and prayers go out to you, Miss Rubin. Now, Shine has been redirecting people to Natalia's interview, like I mentioned earlier. It's like Shine is indirectly supporting Natalia Rubin's remarks because she can speak the truth without recourse. But because of the agreement that Shine, that Shine uh, uh, engaged in with, with Bad Boy or Diddy or whatsoever, he has to be very careful and calculated in what he says not to incriminate Diddy because I'm certain if he incriminates Diddy the way these gag orders usually go, he owes him that money back. And yeah. Shine doesn't want that. You know, so um, so Shine even goes as far as wishing Diddy well and thanking Diddy for his generous co contributions in Belize, his home country. So again, this is Diddy. It's raining on Diddy. Hopefully Fonsworth Bentley's umbrella is big enough to catch the rain 
from draining Diddy out. This is crazy. Now, not only is Diddy under investigation for as a sex trafficker, and you got Homeland Security and the FBI and all these people on your back, and you got a host of other people. You got people dropping, dropping up dead associated with these situations. Where is this going to end? How many more lives are going to be lost because of this senseless, youthful folly? This, this, this negativity, this, 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 this eagerness to compromise other people's character for your own selfish benefit and selfish gain. When is this all going to end? Where is Diddy going to end up? Is Shine going to get pulled back up into this? Is he going to indirectly and incriminate Diddy, which was going to force him to, to go against the gag order that he signed and have to give money back? Is Shine himself life in danger? We still waiting for Diddy's other supporters. Where is Jay-Z? Where is Jay-Z? Last time I saw Jay-Z, he was dancing with a, 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 a Asian woman at an age, a room full of Asian people putting her hair on his hair, acting very, very weird. But we'll talk about that at a later time. Where's everybody? Where's the support for Diddy? They're out of sight, out of mind, the same way Diddy was when he was sitting there recording them, trying to incriminate them for his own selfish gain in case he got caught up. Now he can bring these other people down with him. The same thing that make you laugh, Diddy, is also the same thing that makes you cry. Yes. Nobody escapes life free. God created the perfect universe, a perfect system called the universe to govern us all. And it's undefeated and it keeps a perfect score. The ether, the ether is part of the universe. That's the conductor for every vibrational sequence. So anything and everything can be found in the ether. So nobody escapes life free, Diddy, not even you. We all must be accountable for all of our energy that we put into the universe, from our words, our thoughts, and our actions. It's all coming back for you, Diddy. Hopefully, Fonsworth Bentley can catch that rain because it's raining on you hard. It's pouring down. It's a thunderstorm on you, Diddy. Listen, I thank all of you so much for watching. Be great. And more importantly, be blessed.